go to Canberra now and catch up with Bridget McKenzie, a Nationals uh, Senator. Uh, it's been a busy day in the nation's capital, uh, Bridget. I, I won't get you to share your opinion of Ray Gunn. Um, uh, I, I, I do want to get you to share your opinion of the former Immigration Minister, Andrew Giles, though, because there have been more revelations about exactly mm. the mistakes and some misleading to the public about uh, some of the criminals that have been let loose from immigration detention. Yeah, absolutely. Great to be with you, Chris. Um, yeah, Giles, once again, um, thanks to a Freedom of Information uh, request, has been found to mislead Parliament. Uh, you'll recall that when detainees were released, uh, he was asked questions in the House of Representatives. Were these um, detainees on visas, he confirmed they were on um, bridging visas with all appropriate uh, conditions of the visa to keep Australians safe. The reality shows that 83 of these uh, detainees were released without visa conditions, with no appropriate conditions to keep Australians safe for us to be able to ascertain where they were at any given time and likewise. And, and this just shows once again that the Labor government doesn't care about ministerial standards or how a Westminster system should run because he has left that statement hanging in the House of Representatives on Hansard um, when really it is misleading Parliament and is an actual breach of the ministerial code of conduct that the Prime Minister brought in in June 22 where ministers and MPs uh, should always be honest and upfront with the public and in Parliament and if you you know, make a mistake in, in your public utterances, then you should rectify it as, as quickly as possible, which he's failed to do. Yeah, you've got to correct the record as quickly as you can, and normally you would pay a price. But we know Labor, this government's not worried about that because Katie Gallagher no. uh, misled the Senate and didn't pay a price. But at least Andrew Giles has been punted from immigration now and he's in a junior portfolio. The, I think the key point here for Australians is whether or not the new minister, Tony Burke, is doing anything. He's had a few weeks in the job now. Mm. Is he doing anything to assure us that he's either getting some of these criminals back into custody or ensuring that there's appropriate monitoring of them in the community? Well, I haven't seen any public commentary from Tony Burke other than rhetoric, um, which we're very used to out of this portfolio from the, the Labor government. Um, similarly, in this portfolio, concerns about uh, bringing in people from um, Gaza, and them going through the appropriate checks. The minister who wanted the Home Affairs job, uh, who replaced Tony Burke, Minister what was asked this in the Senate today, could he give us a guarantee that everyone being brought in from Gaza had been through the appropriate checks um, for security reasons? And he refused to give that guarantee. He refused to say that they'd all been through appropriate assessments. And that's a concern. We all want to assist those people um, going through difficulties. We did it, uh, obviously, when we were in government um, with people who'd gone through the Ukraine war or Afghanistan, etc. But you've got to put people through their hoops, through the serious security assessments, and to make sure you're not actually importing Hamas sympathisers uh, into suburban streets here in Sydney and Melbourne, which is something we're very concerned about. So if Burke was up for the job... Uh, he'd be making that very clear, but they still seem to be equivocating, Chris. Yeah, I would argue also the way to resolve the situation is not to remove uh, Gazans from uh, from Gaza, but to end the war, maximise the pressure on Hamas uh, to get rid of Hamas and return that area to peace so that the people in the Palestinian territories can get some order again. But uh, that, that is some way off. Just briefly, though... And return though, the hostages. Oh, number yep. one, return those hostages who always seem to be forgotten by so many people. I wear this badge every night for those hostages who are still yeah, held. Same. Um, now, I, I just want to get you quickly on this uh, legislation to deal with the CFMEU. That's going to be held up. Mm. Uh, why is the Coalition uh, fiddling with this legislation? Why can't it be passed straight away? No one's fiddling with this legislation, Chris. Um, it's been introduced today. Uh, we haven't even started debating on it. We facilitated it being introduced as quickly as possible. Um, we want to see the CFMEU dealt with, but as the Minister Responsible, Minister Cash, has made very, very clear, you could drive a truck through this legislation. It gives 
all the discretion about how to deal uh, with the CFMEU and the administration period to minister what. And when you've got a Labor Party who's got into this mess of their own making by getting rid of the ABCC, who owe their own pre-selections and political careers to the CFMEU, mm. you've got to ask why aren't they declaring a conflict of interest every single time they get up and talk about this stuff? So yeah. mm. we know there's issues with the bill and we are having sensible and legitimate and careful conversations about amendments because, at, as it stands, it's a flawed bill. All right, um, we'll, we'll follow that one through. Saying. I think Labor should reinstate yep. the AB double C first up uh, as the first thing they should be doing, but that, that won't happen. Thanks so much for joining us, Senator. I appreciate it. Senator Bridget McKenzie there, live from Canberra.